Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Amos Kester. We are back with a daytime video here in Itori, Ogun State. So I'm going to give you a full view of this farm and how aesthetic the farm is and also take you into the farm houses. Now, by my left is the gate house. That is the gate house for the farm where the security personnel uh, resides. And this is actually the bar. It's a snail bar where you can actually come and get tasty snail meal and some drinks. So it's just been um, opened. And in fact, I'm sure you want to get the taste of this snail here. All right, so we'll take you to inside the whole environment you see is the farm. So we'll just walk you through the different sections of the farm and we'll take it from there. Alright. Alright, so you can see we are at the staff quarters now. This is actually the reception where we have the farm office and also some convenience here for visitors to come around. We have office for the director and also the office for the receptionist. So this is what it is. Then you look at those rooms there. Those are the staff quarters. You can see one, two, three, four, and five. They are all for staffs. So that's why I said this farm is one of the most beautiful farms to actually establish. So you can see on this part, that's the greenhouse. You can actually take the path like this to the greenhouse, which we are going to do. And then we are going to the concrete pen house because this giant building you see here is the concrete pen. So this is the farm staff quarter. We have everything. It is fully air conditioned and it's made a lot conducive for the staff. So you can see admin, admin office there. Then we have yeah, that's the admin office. Don't worry, you can see. It so this is uh, for the staff, you can see no entry, staff only. So we have one, two, three, four, five for staff office because we have a lot of staff on the farm and there are lots of pens so you need a lot of persons to mount the farm. Alright, so we take you right straight into the concrete pen. So you can see how it's designed, that's our water system up there. Uh, yeah, this is the door. So this is it. You can see the pens here, 320 pens. Like I said during the ninth time, the previous video, that this farm was posted on the YouTube some time ago when we have not roofed it at all. And I was just demonstrating how these pens were constructed while I pointed to the greenhouse. So this is that very farm and we've done with it and we've stopped it and also snails have been moved to the greenhouse as you may have seen from the previous video just in case you've seen that. So you can also make a call from here through to the office. You can see that it is really really nice. You don't have to run down to the office or uh, to go somewhere else to so pass an information. It's connected through all the staff rooms and also the office and the bar as well. So you can actually put through a call from the farm. So you can see how easy the farm is built. And the walk path, it's so fast. So you can see you either go right or you either go left, whichever way you want to assess the farm. So this is uh, a really, really nicely built farm that we did here in uh, Itori, Open State. Yeah, some persons may say, uh, why all this luxury in the farm? Yeah, but one thing you need to know is whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. Yeah, you may not have the resources to do something like this, but some persons have it in abundance but don't know what to do with it. Yeah, because you may say, okay, this is actually a risk. How can someone spend all this amount of money for snail farming? 
Life itself is a risk. Getting married is a risk. Staying alive is a risk. Whatever you do is a risk. The money we've spent or they've spent in putting up all this facility you're seeing in this video is not enough to buy one car, one Range Rover. And you have people that have four, five, six Range Rover. You have people that have two, three, four Benz. So you can see it depends on the risk you decide to take. Because with this risk, you have returns on your investment. But getting a car worth 100 million, 80 million, I don't know how much return you get from that. So life itself is a risk. It depends on how you calculate the risk you're going into. So for this, the client is already seeing the results because we've stuffed this farm for quite some time now. And the results are already flowing in because the snails are producing, the young ones are doing well, the um, uh, breeders are laying efficiently, and the greenhouse is also doing just fine. So you can see that this risk is worth uh, taking than some other risks that some persons with lots of money would take because that car is not going to generate you much. And of course, even if you want to use this for uh, an estate, though the money spent here will not build you an estate, but even if you were to build an estate with it, this will give you faster returns than how much that estate will generate for you within uh, the same period of time. So life itself is a risk. It depends on what risk you want to take. And whatever risk you want to take, make sure it is a calculated risk. So I just want to get that part done because uh, the farm is so sophisticated. Yeah, there are some things I came to meet that I actually didn't expect, but uh, I think he's a client that has taste and he wanted to build things the way he wanted them. But we are solely responsible for the farmhouses. So these are the pens which you have seen in several of our videos. So we're going to take you to the greenhouse and show you how it is built and also how functional the greenhouse is. So we'll move you out to the greenhouse. All right, so you can see this is the part that leads to the greenhouse. It is so neatly done that even when it rains, you don't have to worry about your shoes or whatever you're putting on. Now, this is another part leading to a bush bar. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if we'll take you there, but you can see there's a touch roof over there. That's a bush bar, a small hut where you can actually have some good time. So we'll just take you through to the greenhouse and We'll see you inside the greenhouse. All right, so this is the water system. So you can see our surface pump here. The pressure is something else inside this greenhouse uh, once you put on the sprinklers. So it is very humid and conducive for the snails. So we'll take you right in. So you can see we're still on our path. And here we are. Here's the doorway. Now, the last video we made it in the night, so probably you may not have seen it as clear as it is right now. So I'm standing on the walk paths. Like I said in the night, we like to use wood for most of our walk paths. Uh, we know some persons use uh, blocks, and that's very okay. It's nice to use block, wood, or whatever path you choose to use. But this gives you an elevation from the ground so you can see the snails can actually hide under this as well you don't have to uh, worry about stamping on the snails on the ground so this provides an additional shade for the snails so this is what it looks like you can move in yeah these are the sprinklers and they are very very effective so if you look at the greenhouse now, the floor, you see most of the snails we saw last time are no longer here. These are the platforms. So the snails have actually gone under the platforms because that is the purpose they serve. During the daytime, they hide under, they take shade. So they provide shade or hide out for the snails during the daytime. And at night, they become feeders for the snails. So the snails come on top to feed from them just like the previous video we made. So that is how it is managed or created. So this is it, and you can see the vegetation. The snails are actually doing justice to it. And sometimes we actually go in to check 
for mortality that's why you see that uh, some of the grasses are a little bit brushed because probably once in two weeks we check for mortality to see if there are any dead snails that are not seen so they don't pollute the environment so you pick those ones out because snails normally die even in the greenhouse just like in the pen house so uh we'll only be deceiving you if we tell you that ah your snails will not die in the greenhouse no that's not true death is a natural occurrence so i uh, just that they don't die in alarming rates so definitely mortality will occur anything that lives dies and also animals that produce in mass large quantities they also have a higher rate of mortality than the ones that produce minimally or just a few probably like the cattle the goats that will produce one or two or three the mortality rate is lower but for snails you already understand that one snail can give you as much as 50 100 200 depending on the species of the snail so an animal that produces in such high capacity the only way we, uh, God decided to control the population of that species is by raising the mortality rate. So you shouldn't be uh, as much afraid when you have a slightly higher mortality. Although with poor management, you will have really high mortality. For well-managed snails, mortality is 20%. So don't be deceived if anybody tells you that uh, if he or she sets up the farm for you or build a farm for you, your snails are not going to die, this, that, no, no, no. That's not true. Death is a natural occurrence. But whatever the case is, what is being produced is 100 times more than what you expected to lose a week or a year. So that's the whole idea about snail farming. And don't forget that we still don't have vaccines for these animals. Unlike other species of livestock that are conventional to us, we can actually administer vaccines when they are ill, when they are sick. We can provide treatments. But with these animals, we're still working on uh, seeing how to get them treated or get an accurate sign of ill health in the animals. Because with snails, most times you don't even know when they are sick. You only know that when you are having high mortality rates, then you know there's something wrong. But to see and look at the animal and say this animal is sick, even if you notice that, to revive it is almost impossible. So these are some of the realities in snail farming. We have been into it for 10 years now. So, of course, we are still learning in the business, but I can tell you a lot of things about snail farming. So that is the way it is. So you can see this is the green vegetation and the snails are actually thriving very fine inside. So we'll just take it to the extreme end and bring it back right out. Now so you can see them trying to bury themselves under the ground. But if it was yesterday, you see them or if it's in the night, you see them all out moving about everywhere like you saw from the previous video but because it is night sorry because it is daytime you see them trying to bury themselves under the ground so some will go under the leaves some will go under the soil and so on so you still see that some of them are still out there because the conditions are very okay and of course you can see what it looks like on this part so the environment is cool we have watered the environment so you can see the water here this is to help cool the temperature of the greenhouse so what we do normally is you water in the morning and in the evening so the snails will always be conducive there's always moisture on the ground so that helps the snails to thrive so this is how the greenhouse is being managed we've shown you a video in the night and now we're making a video during the daytime so you can actually uh, see how they try both during the night and in the daytime so of course we've said a lot but we still have so much to say so but that cannot be said all in one video so probably the next video we'll make we'll still tell you more
because we are learning new things and so we are also improving our uh, our standards so uh, until we come your way again thank you god bless you and the number to call just in case you want to reach us is plus two three four eight zero six eight five two five zero three two or you can go to the description below the video and get the number because it's always written there all right so until we see you again thank you and bye bye